ready? Welcome back to the Stevie Small Show. It's Tuesday. Time to talk some golf. Hope everyone had a good holiday weekend. I cracked my tooth on a pretzel and we'll probably need a crown. So that's how my weekend went. Excited to talk about the Canadian Open. Got Sam with me. Sam, how's it going? Doing well, doing well. Um, you know, I have to talk about Davis Riley because this this was Are the first okay? time he ever no, still okay. haven't recovered. Um, if anybody remembers, I used to host a show uh, on Fantasy Points back in the day, a couple years ago, and every single week I would have Davis Riley on my mm -hmm. outright card, thinking that he would possibly win his first tournament. Uh, I was on him last year when he won his first uh, non-individual tournament at the Zurich with Nick Hardy. I was not on this past week at the Charles Schwab for him to win his first PGA tour event by five shots yeah. over Scotty Scheffler and Keegan Bradley there. Hell of a performance from Davis Riley. Just wanted to shout that out and say that I am never ever betting Brian Harmon ever again. He's okay. dead to me. Uh, I bet you were probably betting Cam Young again though. And you will probably not be on him the week he wins knowing you. Yeah, that's, Probably what's going to happen. Uh, I don't plan to make that mistake. Things never work out the way that I plan for them, but uh, <laughs> I don't plan to make that mistake. I am not on Cam Young this week. As That's of this current time. moment, I am not on Cam Young. Okay, let's talk about the course a little bit. We have another course renovation two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. Again, it's kind of more of like a sustainability versus playability here, but I'll let you do a quick little spiel uh, and then we'll jump in. Yeah, so in my uh, my brand new rhythm course preview that's going to be out this week, um, basically that a lot of this course, like like Steph said, sustainability over playability. They ripped up a lot of the rough around these greens. So now uh, one of the brand new things that all these courses want to do on their renovations is they want to replace all the grass around the greens with tight lies and increases kind of the difficulty factor. It's a little bit tougher to chip off of a tight lie than it is out of the lush rough. Um, you know, it, you know, it's easier to get your club under the ball in that lush rough. So, you know, that's a, that's a difficulty factor. They move some bunkers around, but mo and they also put some irrigation systems in similar what they, they did at the Charles Schwab at colonial last week. Um, but other than that, not too much different. Uh, the course is about 150 yards longer than it was last year. And uh, the only other change that I saw that was really notable was the greens have been changed from a bentgrass POA blend to 100% bentgrass that should run a little bit faster. It's going to run near a 12 on the stent meter. So, uh, you know, with those undulating greens, you're going to have a lot of uh, putty challenges this week. Yeah, you know me. Obviously, you know, I probably didn't look too much into the renovation stuff as I should have. It was a long weekend. I also don't look a lot at weather, so I couldn't tell you what the weather looks like this week. Kind of it's going to be wet. wet. It's okay. going to rain the next couple of days heading in. It's going to be a pretty soft course. Good to know. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Thank God you're here. Uh, looking for, I kind of just looked for driving accuracy again. I know I feel like every week I seem to be bringing this up again. Good wedge game, like successful putters with, you know, these bent grass greens and a lot of good current form type mm -hmm. stuff you'll notice when we get into these smasher passes which unless there's anything you want to add we will do that right away no let's do it okay let's do it we're going to start with very popular name as an as expected congratulations to him for having his baby i don't i, don't, I think it happened i mean i don't even know the <laughs> name of it it's funny because for some reason they can tell us about rory's divorce but it's like pulling <laughs> teeth to find out if scheffler or fucking sam burns had their baby um Smash or pass, Sam Burns, top 20, plus 140. Yeah, this is a smash for me. Um, he remains one of the best wedge players on planet Earth. And 42% uh, of approaches came from inside 150 feet uh, or 150 yards, sorry, when this tournament was last held at Hamilton Country Club in 2019. So that's something we're really going to be looking for here, guys who can really stick it close with their wedge. Uh, these greens have been increased in size a little bit as well. So really want to get as close to the pin as possible, as well as the fact that Burns remains one of the best bent grass putters inside 15 feet 
on tour as well. If we all remember, that's how he won the Charles Schwab a few years ago was that 55 foot putt from off the green to beat Scotty Scheffler uh, at Colonial. Uh, and then the consistency's just been there really recently for Burns. Uh, gained on approach in nine of his last 10 uh, events. And he had a solid Wells Fargo a few weeks ago. Last week was something I'm kind of willing to write off. Uh, the miscut at the PGA. Uh, he played solid the first two rounds for the most part. Like, yeah, and then just kind of fell like apart a, with like his one putter. and a half strokes per. So like, yeah. I, I think that's fair. Yeah, and he felt he just fell apart with his putter. Uh, just was not there. I think he lost five strokes on the green with the putter uh, last week. So that was that was very tough. And he's he's one of those guys that can win if it's a putting contest and the scores are high. He can win there. And if it's a tough event and the scores are lower, he can win there as well. So I'm really not concerned. Burns is one of my favorite plays this week. I do have him on my outright card as well as his top 20, but I really like the price on this top 20, so it's a smash for me. Yeah, I actually, like, I think this is a good bet. And I feel like every week, you know, I feel like he could really put it together here. His ball striking mm -hmm. makes him very well suited for this course. I just, I just don't end up betting Burns that much. So I'll, I'm going to smash this bet, but I won't be placing it myself. So I don't want to be misleading in that. But I, I understand why he is going to be a popular play this week. Moving on, smash or pass, Mac Hughes, top 30 plus 135. Absolutely love it. Smash. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to get too much into it because I have some stuff to say on him a little bit later in the show. But he played really well here in 2019. He was T14. Mm -hmm. And he fits the characteristics of a guy who is going to contend at a tournament like this uh, on this kind of course. Very, very solid golfer. Doesn't hurt that he's Canadian as well. He's probably played Hamilton at least a few times since the renovation, I would hope. So I'm, I'm going all in here. And the price is great there as well. Yeah, I am all in as well. Uh, hometown narrative. He's from Hamilton. Cool. Uh, his mm -hmm. last eight played five top 30s, including T6, T13, and a T14. Short game looks solid. Three of his better ball striking weeks have really come in these past like seven, eight weeks here. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, T14 here in 2019. Leads the field in strokes game putting, last 24. A lot to like. He was 14th in my model. I feel like there's a good vibe there with him finishing T14 here in 2019. So I'm going to smash as well before we move on to um, Rory, smash or pass, the favorite in the field. I think we all know I'm going to pass here on this one, but I will let you, if you like him, smash at the plus 375 to win. There is literally only one caveat that I would say that, you know, I could I could get ahead, get behind smashing this bet, and it's if you have zero other bets on your card except for the Rory outright, and you're putting every bit of your allocated credit onto Rory because this number at a brand new course, uh, with the way that Rory, ha I mean, Rory's been playing very well in the last few weeks, but we also can't we also can't you know forget that the last year and a half has been a big struggle for him. And I'm just not sure that he can pay off a plus 375 here. This is a pass for me. Um, only 63rd in strokes game putting on pure bent grass greens in the last two years. 107th in three putt avoidance. So with these bigger greens, that's going to be something that you know comes into account if he's not able to kind of get dialed in with his irons. The irons have been better for him, but definitely been one of his worst parts of his game. Uh, overall this season, you know, if we're not taking into account the last couple of weeks and then 52nd and scrambling from short grass, again, one of the biggest changes on this course since he won this tournament in 2019 has been the change from lush green around a uh, lush green rough around the green to this short grass and tight lie tight runoff lies that are all around the greens now. So I'd be worried about that a little bit skeptical. Uh, it's just too short of a number in a possible putting contest for me. I would be much happier rolling the dice on other people here than Rory. Yeah, I mean, you would have to, like, fucking pay me to bet on Rory. I just am so out on the man. Just as a, <laughs> as a person, he irritates me. He gets under my skin, so I'm not betting it, um, especially not betting it at that number. I think there's other guys here that I would rather yeah. – go after i am sure that there are going to be some people that do the single bullets if you look at how he's dominated you know back here in 2019 so 
I get it. I get why he's a favorite. Yeah, I mean, winning by five, seven strokes is here is, is kind of crazy. He played really well. It, it was one of his best. I think that that might have been his best Sunday performance ever was that 61 he fired to win by seven shots here. So I feel like the shorter course is here too. It just opens up the opportunity for mm -hmm. some other guys to get on top. So yeah, you can't bomb and gouge this tournament anymore. Yeah. That was one of the changes that they wanted to make after 2019 was that a lot of guys, you know, it's just a bomb and gouge. Uh, they let, they lengthened the rough. They made the rough more penal. So, you know, distance from the edge of fairway is something I'm, I'm looking at this week. So yeah, a lot of things that just kind of go against the Rory narrative to repeat. Yeah. This is another popular guy, Smasher Pass, Aaron Rye, top 20, plus 200. So it's funny enough, um, I'm doing my rhythm course preview, and Aaron Rye came up as the most popular top 20 bet. 53% uh, mm -hmm. rhythm win probability based on the model that I put in there. And I'm kind of with it. Yeah. I really like it. Two top 30 finishes, as well as a T4 in his last three events. Really played well at that CJ Cup uh, with T4 there. Uh, he finished T3 at last year's RBC Canadian, albeit at a different course. But mm -hmm. he is a he is a really solid bent grass putter, yeah. uh, even though one of the weaknesses of his game is that kind of around the green and on the green portion. But if his irons are on, and they usually are, mm -hmm. like he's he's tough to stop in, in some of these, you know, lesser fields here. So I think we're getting good odds on this. I'm willing to I'm willing to go along with it. I'm not going to be betting him outright like I've seen a lot of people doing. Yeah, because I just don't think he has win equity. But the top twenty is very very achievable for him. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I will not get there on the outright only because of the popularity. Mm -hmm. um, being a brat about that, but look at he he's gained over three and a half strokes ball striking in his last three starts. Um, top five and gained in good drives gained and bogey avoidance. You just think about like a shorter course where approach play needs to be on point and it does scream in Aaron Rye and mm -hmm. he's playing very well right now. So I like the top 20. I probably will bet him first round leader. I found myself every week when I yeah. can't quite get there outright, but I still want to be involved. I do end up betting first round leader. And he's someone that plays well round one yeah. always. You see his name creeped at the top there. So I'm going to smash the top 20 as well. Smash or pass Pendrith top 30 plus 140. Another smash year for me. I, I love. I, it's not even just the. I find myself liking all the Canadians here, and I know it's. The, you know, everyone loves to flock to all the Canadians at Canadian courses. Um, obviously, I. I think a lot of casual golf fans would be very surprised that last year Nick Taylor was the first guy in like sixty years to win the RBC Canadian as a Canadian. I mm -hmm. think there's a very healthy chance we get two back-to-back -back Canadian winners of this event. Uh, again, I'll save that for our done section, but really love Pendrith's game for this course. Scrambling from short grass, he ranks 10th um, in the field in that category. Sixth in par four scoring, 13th in birdie or better from par four scoring. It was going to be huge with those 12 par fours. There's two that are drivable on this course. Um, just his game is in a very good spot right now, coming off the win uh, a few weeks ago as well. So I'm a really big fan of Pendrith this week. Really like the number. Top 30 is not as high of a barrier as it really should be. I think it should be. I think he should be a lot higher odds to win this tournament. So I'm with it. Give me a smash on Pendrith. Yeah, I don't hate it. I mean, he's a recent winner. You look at kind of what he's done. His putty's been really good too. He's playing well enough, I think. I do like the top 30, but I probably will find myself betting other players around this range. So I'm going to pass just to keep things interesting as well so that we're not going through and uh, yeah, smash. God pass. forbid. God forbid we always agree with each other. Yeah. And I'm not, and we're not fucking doing that today. Uh, <laughs> smash or pass EVR top 30 plus 138. I saw this earlier. I saw Speaking a, of a guy on at that, in that range. Top 30 plus 138. I'm kind of with it for EVR. The form mm -hmm. has been pretty decent for him lately, if I'm not misremembering yeah. things. So but I can I'm gonna just so. jump in. I'm gonna smash the top 30 here for him. Three top eights in his last nine. He's a birdie fest guy. He's playing good this year. Um, played here once, finished 20th, 
He opened shooting a, a 64, so he's going to be a first-round leader guy for me this week. He's top 20 on tour in strokes gain total, putting, and scoring average. So I'm in. I'm smashing EBR top 30 at plus 138. I like the number quite a bit. I like it. I like it too. If the only thing that gets me off of it is the fact that his driving accuracy is a little bit like lesser than I would like to see on a yeah. course like this that has the 10th narrowest fairways on tour, like – I'm not going to let that get too in the way of me taking a top 30 with this good of odds on it. So I, I'm in. I'm in on it as well. I'm being very agreeable with you today. You are being, being very agreeable. I'm sure when we get to the quad Ds now, <laughs> that will not continue. Why don't you go ahead and tell me who your one and done is this week? So, yeah, my one and done. Uh, I like three guys who are for my one. Well, and you done. get one. Burns. It's quad Ds. You okay. can't just you get one. You got to pick one. All right. So then we're going to go with we're going to go with Corey Connors here then. As my quad D. Did you know that Corey Connors doesn't have a single top 10 finish this this year? That's wild. He's had like – And had you like want to bet him out, right? 20, he's had like 20 top 15 finishes. No, it's actually hasn't not gotten, talking. I think people think Corey Connors is way better than he is. So you're just yelling at me then right now, <laughs> aren't you? I'm fine uh, with it. You can yeah. totally do it. I'm cool. So I love – I do love Corey Connors here. He's been – I will say he's been worse on par four scoring this year, but he's still one of the best approach merchants in the entire PGA tour ranks first in this field in weighted approach gained, um, has gained on all 13 events this year. He's been losing less with a putting stroke and he has three top 26 finishes in the last three starts. And he's better off scrambling off the short grass than he is in the rough. The scrambling out of rough might be Corey Connors' worst enemy. I think he might be worse than me in scrambling out of the rough. But out of tight lies, he improves from 144th out of the rough to 32nd in his last two years of scrambling off the tight lies. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. I do think Connors is going to kind of show up for his home event. He really didn't play well here until a couple of or at this event until a couple of years ago, he has a sixth and a 20th in his last two tries at the RBC Canadian. And the form has been good enough for me. So I'm going to take him here. He's good off the tee, good, getting good drives gained. So I'm going to go with Corey Connors here. I think it's time for him to get his next win. And it's going to be here. He's going to be the second Canadian in a row. Okay. I'll be happy for you. <laughs> I'll be happy for you. Like, I, that's fine. Um, I, I'm going off of this from like a one and done perspective for mine. And I like, okay. I'm going to use this guy this week because I think that the window is going to close. I won't get there outright because of how popular he is this week. And mm -hmm. I don't love the number for a guy like Alex Norin, but I am going to use him. But just from a consistency, yeah, consistency, from a consistency basis. Consistency and I think like moving forward, like I think this window is going to close for me to take him. Um, and I think it's a good week to use him because he has been playing phenomenal golf and he is well suited for this course. So that's going to be my one and done. Why don't you give me your dad bet? Yeah. Yeah, I, ju I do just want to say Alex Noren, 25 to 1, might be the worst number that I've ever seen on a golf betting thing. Uh, big Alex Noren hater. Do not get it. Just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, my dad bet is my dad bet is Corey Connors, top 20 plus 115. Everything, everything that I everything that I said holds through with him. Uh, I'm actually snarling absolutely. at you. Like I just like, <laughs> snarled. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good because I'm not looking at I'm not I looking mean, at it right now. I'm looking at my notes. What has he Thanks done? With, has he, I don't even know what he's done. I didn't even look at him. Like I don't think only he, only only seven only seven top twenty five finishes in his okay, last nine events. Cool. Um, so what do you think? He has top thirty or what? I'm taking him top twenty plus one fifteen. Okay. Really love everything that Connors has done. Just from an approach standpoint, he's really softened up his putting stroke. I remember he said in the offseason that he was trying a new putting grip as mm -hmm. well. It looks, it has not really paid off dividends. He's only gained in four out of his last 10 appearances putting, but putting is never going to be his strong suit. I'm more concerned about the fact, or not concerned, I'm more focusing on the fact that his approach has been absolutely terrific. Uh, he's been gaining an average of two shots per round on the field on approach over his last five events. Just absolutely like stunning numbers from him. And his driving accuracy has been really solid lately over his past two events. Uh, 
7% over the field in driving accuracy in his last two events at the Wells Fargo and the PGA. So really looking forward to seeing Connors play well here. I think he gets off to a really quick start. Uh, I'll be betting him pretty much across the board for this week. Okay. I like it. My dad bet. I'm keeping it simple. I like Matt Hughes enough this week that the mm. top 30 plus 135. Going to keep like it that it. way. Hometown narrative. Um, I think he even has, I probably will get there with that. Like to be completely honest, it's not a great number, but it is what it is. Short game looks great. Kind of said it before. Um, he's had some good ball striking weeks the last eight-ish weeks here. Finished T14 in 2019. Top 30 is really not asking a lot either. It's kind of yeah. a cowardly bet, to be completely honest. If you want to go top 20, I don't blame you. Um, and putting has been really, really good here. He mm -hmm. leads the field his la the last 24 rounds. So I'm going to go with my dad bet. It's going to be Mac Hughes, top 30, plus 135. Where are you going dumb fuck wise? Don't fuck wise. You're going to like this. I, I texted you that you were going to like this. We're pulling up Bud Colley again. I, thank God, because I there was a few guys that I was going to make another video because there's a bunch of guys that I'm not going to be able to get in here, like my names that everyone's like, why the fuck is this girl betting that? And I <laughs> wanted to put him on here. I debated about it. So I absolutely love it. So I really like this. I pulled out some like really deep, like date, like data, data narratives. Yeah. From uh, from Betsperts when I looked at it this week, set uh, over the past two years on bent grass uh, courses, Bud Colley ranks or sorry three years because we have to account you know from everything else second in good drives gained, sixth in distance from the edge of the fairway, which is going to be huge with how that penal that rough is this week, eleventh in scrambling from the short grass, and second in par four par four scoring fourth in birdie or better scoring on par fours in the last three years. So Bud Cauley ranks really well in all these analytics categories. Really like him. Uh, T40 plus 150. You're getting a solid, solid number there. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend taking anything else except the top 40 unless you want to get really, really crazy. I could see Steph pulling a uh, – what is, what is the 20 to 1 – on Bud Colley, I could see it being like 12 to one or something crazy. I, like even, that. I don't see. think I even looked at it, but I bet it's, it's probably something I'm going to end up betting. I'm currently looking for it right now. I'm so far down there. I'm not even sure where <laughs> I am anymore. Uh, I can't, I don't even know if he's on here. He might, he might be so far down there that uh, he's not even on there. Anyways, we'll find it later. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't shock me to see uh, Bud Colley plus 500. Uh, for the top 20, which is less than I thought it would be. But still, uh, really love this top 40 number for Collie. He's played some solid golf, uh, you know, at times this season. You know, it, it's obviously been very, you know, hit or miss with him. But I do think this is a course that works really well for him. And I think he plays well here. So that's going to be my dumb fuck bet. And for my dumb fuck, did you guys really think I wouldn't go back to – to Kelly Craft, like let's be serious. I'm go of course, right. I'm going back to here. Kelly Craft here. I hate it here. <laughs> Listen to me. He, the no. last time he popped in my model, which it, it was at the Byron Nelson, he finished cheap 13. He did it again. He's at the, ex the same exact spot. Top 40 plus 220, top 30 plus 400, whatever you know okay. you're into, you could pick either of those. He's the number one in the field in good drives gained percentage, last 24. He's gaining just over a stroke the last 24 rounds on approach. I don't know what it is. I fucking like Kelly Craft, and we're going to bet him again here as my dumb fuck bet because it's probably a little silly to expect that he does this Not again. Today, Satan. But we are doing it. You're lucky. Not today, Satan. Are. Not what? today, Satan. Okay, we're going to watch <laughs> Kelly Craft win this. Uh, if, Kelly Kraft, if Kelly Craft wins this, I will – uh well we're gonna have to come up we're gonna have to come up with some sort of punishment i'm not sure throw some respect sure. on kelly craft all right <laughs> give me your dart throw before we wrap this up my dart throw is matt wallace 75 to one. Oh, it's a good dart uh, throw though i do i do like it i do like it short game and punting specialist he's less accurate than i am off the tee uh you know which is could be an issue here with with you know, how important driving accuracy is at this course. But coming off three top 40 finishes and a T4 at the CJ Cup, 
You can dial in the approach when needs to, top 50 in par four scoring. So, you know, I really like how he plays, you know, and how he's playing recently. Uh, the recent form is what kicks it for me. All right. Now, my dart throw is also a dumb fuck throw. It's just going to end up being something which, if you want to just do a top 10 on this guy, that's 20 to 1. But uh, David Lipsky just had a really good approach game. I, I thought I about it. I, I just, thought about it. I did. Yeah. When I looked at the approach game stuff that he just recently did, like, solid golf player. Like, he's definitely going to be a first round leader, I think, for me. But 350 to 1. Why not? It's a dart throw. Uh, give me David Lipsky. He's playing like absolute dog shit right now, but like he has the kind of game that you look yeah. for on a course like this. Yeah. So, and his approach numbers were like, crazy too last week. So it's yeah. like something that I, I can get there. Like something could have clicked. Something yeah. could have clicked. Like like la last year, I remember like he would come out of nowhere to be playing very well. He can pour mm -hmm. in birdies when he needs to. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, you know, he's, he's a good putter. So yeah, I'm with it. I'm with Problem it. Problem is a lot of the guys that like, I probably would have used like a dart throw on that were under that, like 70, they're moving so much. So yeah. I would stay tuned. I'll probably post a couple of things on Twitter over the next 24 hours to see what we get to. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, Make sure you subscribe, like, do all the things, and let's go Rangers because I know you're going to the Panthers game. So, watch them make it, break it, break it, break it.